Hey guys, and welcome back to week seven of the Pagnata Take on Sports. We continue with the ACC, and uh, we've already gone through the ACC Coastal, so we're going to move, or the ACC Atlantic, so we're going to move on to the ACC Coastal. Um, and we're going to start off, we'll start off at the bottom, and uh, I have Virginia Tech finishing last. We'll talk about them first. Uh, I know he doesn't have them finishing last, but, uh, oh shoot, there we go. Uh, but I, I, I don't think, uh, from what I've seen, I've looked at them last year, they were, we all know they had their problems. Uh, you know, embarrassing losses against ECU uh, and a couple, yeah, the, the game against uh, Wake Forest that went to overtime was a 6-3 final. Um, so they definitely have some stuff to fix. I think quarterback uh, Brewer is there still, but I think he's got a lot of things that he's got to correct. Uh, wide receiver, again, they have some talent there, but still a lot of young guys. Um, the best part of their entire team is, of course, their defense. Their entire defensive line is pretty much going to the NFL. Uh, they are loaded. Uh, Daddy Nicholas, who I think uh, he might have the best name in college football. His name's Daddy. So, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good name for a defensive lineman. Call me Daddy. That's what he's going to be saying. Uh, and, you know, he's great off the edge. you got Kenny Eakinham, who's really good. And then you got Marshall on the inside. Luther Matty, who wasn't even a starter last year, and he's great. Uh, as well, and then you got Nigel Williams who will back them up. Uh, you got a couple of great, good linebackers with like Deion Clark still there, and of course, I think they have one of the best cornerbacks in college football in Kendall Fuller. That that whole family is just a bunch of freaks out there, and they all go to the same college. So. Uh, but the problem is again, last year, and a main thing on their defense, they have got to find a second corner. Last year, that was one part you could you, you could stay away from Fuller because the other side of the field was wide open. They didn't have anyone that was. Uh, that was formidable. Uh, they're going to try to start Brandon Fakeston again, which I think could work out. He was a young guy. He was a freshman last year, redshirt freshman. So this year, another year of experience. He's going to have an offseason to work, so he might end up being good. But I just think that the offensive side of the ball, there's too many question marks. Uh, the running game, uh, it's not like it used to be at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech always used to have a great running game. That was one thing about the Hokies that you knew uh, they were going to they, they, they have success in. And I think... I know this is crazy to think, and I know I'm going to get criticism over this, but I think the Beamer era in Hokieville, I think, might be over. I think it's coming to an end quickly, um, and I think if he don't, if he if he doesn't work out this year, I think I I'm going six and six. Uh, but I think uh, if they find a way to miss a bowl game, I think he might be uh, he might be on his way out. And so uh, I know you're you're going to definitely have a different take than that on it. So um, they're not going to finish last. They're too good. There's too much talent. Beamer's too too good of a coach. Um, they're in the second year of a new offensive system, so the offense should grow more. They, they've got a quarterback who, who left a school that wants to throw it 60 times to a school that wants to throw it 20 times. Um, True. Although I think they are somewhat adjusting their offense yeah. to his playing style. I do think. I think the best that. thing is, and, you know... I don't bet against Bud Foster True. in the defense that he, you know, they're going to slip up here or there. I mean, every great defense does. But there's too much talent. And, you know, Beamer knows, even though he's older, you know, it, 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 he kind of reminds me much of like Joe Paul before Penn State had its its thing. Yeah. They they had some down years, and they exploded to a 9-1 and one start. Just three years ago, um, four years ago. I feel you. So sure. and 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 they're they're the kind of team that you know they're not going to win pretty. Oh, no. But but That's but that never team, been their style. you know, that team could be an ugly nine win nine and one. You know, at some point. That I mean, I, I think that team. You know, if they can win six games, they can win ten games. Oh yeah. The the main part is because. Which you know does does the offense score? Do they do they protect the ball? Do they force turnovers defensively? Um, so I don't think they finish last. I agree that Beamer's probably got a year or two left. You would think it goes to Foster, but yeah, yeah. Um, no no doubt on that. Yes, if he wants the job, which I think he will. You know, uh, even though it's winding down, I don't see him going out on a. A six and six or a missed bowl game. I may be wrong, I but I mean I I'm a Tar Heel fan, and I I oh man I do not like Virginia Tech, but I don't want to see him go out that way. He's one of the best coaches in yeah. t in today's modern era, definitely. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, you look, um, I, I know, okay, you know, at a conference, besides Ohio State, they're relatively weak. Uh, but Ohio State's going to be tricky. It's, it's going to be tricky, and it's in their place. That's where I think it helps them. If it's, it's in, in Columbus, their, oh, no, well, there's it's, no it's, chance. It's not in Blacksburg. I believe it's in Landover. No, it is actually in Blacksburg. They play... They play no one in a neutral set. They play them at home. That's the, and that is that is a Monday night game. Um, and they don't really have to worry about trying to save something for the next opponent because it's Furman. And yeah. let's be honest, they can put in the back of quarterback and win against Furman. So, uh, yeah, you know, you know that yeah. team, that I, team went to Columbus, and even though it's a seven point ball game, they dominated Ohio State up front, which is where true. You yeah, know, exactly. you ask for a Street, football is one of the trenches. Oh my God. So we've heard that too much. Um, Let's ask Chris Fowler. Has Amir Abdullah got me? Right. Yet? God, that's all I said. So they're too good to go six and six, True. in my opinion. Yeah. Only, only they go six and six is if they get derailed by they, yeah. the injuries. Well, or I, or Michael Brewer play. just yeah. I mean, doesn't grow within the offense. I think what their what their team is is it's either hit. Or yeah. it's severe miss. And that's about what I'm every taking. team in this division. I'm taking a miss. And that's true. I'm yeah. taking for me, I'm taking the miss. Just because I think I don't think Brewer is a guy I don't think it's it's a problem of Brewer had just had a bad season. I think this is something that he had. Why you know, why else would he be I mean, you look at all the quarterbacks they had there at uh, Texas Tech, and he got passed over. He was a yeah. high recruit, and he got passed over by guys like Davis Webb and a walk-on and ba- Baker Mayfield, yes. who we'll talk about when we get to the Big Twelve. Um, so from there, I, I had them finishing last, but that's a, that's a team that could either they could finish last, like in my opinion, they could finish first. We just really don't know. Uh, sixth, I have Virginia. Most people are going to pick them to finish in the basement, and uh, this is a huge year for Virginia. Um, I mean, if they don't if they don't make a bowl game, it's I'm pretty sure Mike London's on his way out. Um, you know, I, I think so. London is a is a good coach. I, I don't think he sh- I think he should get another job somewhere else because he has had year that that team has always been under talented and he finds ways to win. But now when they finally get big recruits, they haven't worked out. Guys like Andrew Brown, who they brought in, they thought that was one of their biggest recruits. Quinn Blanding's a good safety, but again. Not someone that you're saying, well, this is a star. This is a guy that's going to lead them. Offensively, they they lost Grayson Lambert. He transferred. That was right. the best quarterback on their team, no doubt. Uh, Johns was all right, but he just he don't fit the. I mean, he's not that guy. There's that's no identity the ACC. offensively. True. Uh, running game, Mizell has to prove that he's as good as he used to be. I believe he was a former. Either four, he might have actually been a five-star running back coming to Virginia. He's got to show that he's that. They do get T.J. Thorpe from our boys. Um, you know, we hate to see him leave. He's got some talent, but he's not a dominant receiver, which they need. Now, their best player on offense, I think, is the wide receiver, Kanan Severin. I actually like him. I think he's going to be a really good player. I'm mean, an all-ACC player. Um you know, looking at him last year, he had 578 yards receiving, five touchdowns on 42 catches. So there is there's something to build on there because he wasn't their top target a year ago, um, in most people's minds. Uh, but there's 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 so many question marks for them. Um, but I think the only reason they end up winning games, I, I think they're going to win games at the end of the year because they always seem to do it. Whenever Mike Riley is on the hot, or Mike Riley. Woo. Mike London is on the hot seat. They always seem to find a way to win games at the end of the year to try to save his job. But I hope if they don't make a bowl game, they've got to fire him. They've yeah. got to move on out there. Um, so, I mean, I would, you know, look forward to you, man. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, that there's no quarterback play. True. You're not going to win at any level no quarterback. There's no identity offensively. Their defense, I believe, could be extremely elite. The statistics won't support that. But when your offense is not producing, I mean, this team took UCLA four quarters last year. And I think they could do the same thing again this year. Um, it's the same opening week. So, so <clears throat> they can play with anybody. Oh, yeah. Um, They'll be there. But, you know, in, in, in London, recruiting players to Charlottesville is not easy. Oh, yeah. Um, he's brought elite talent there. The 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 development's been terrible, um, and you know so he's on the hot seat. He he he's probably got to make a bowl game and win a bowl game, probably closer to eight wins. I don't think a seven to six season suffices, because uh, this team two years ago 
You have to remember though, this is a team that went f- that 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 a went team that two years ago um, and kept him. He he's survived some of these jobs that it's been terrible. But two years ago, this team was going into the final week in for a chance to play an ACC yes, championship. Yes, I remember that. So, no, um, oh yeah, you know they they yeah. they they'll, they'll be tough. I mean, they always give us a fit. They 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 they, they get up for big games. Oh yes. Um, bottom line, I. Do I do I think they make a bowl game? I think they miss out. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And there, there, there'll be a new a new regime coming to Charlottesville um, next fall. So yeah, I think you're right. I think what what and the thing for me, you look at their schedule. They draw some of the. War, I mean, their schedule is absolutely awful. At a conference, I think they have one of the toughest schedules actually in the nation because they have at UCLA. Then they play Notre Dame the next week in their place, but it's Notre Dame, and then. You get William and Mary, who's a, not even a passer because they're a decent FCS yeah. team, and then you play Boise State in Charlottesville. I, you're you're drawing a lot there, and then you have at Pittsburgh, you have at Carolina, uh, you're home against Georgia Tech at Miami and at Louisville. Those last four games yeah. that I just read to you are straight. That is a straight schedule. Now you get Duke at home, and you get Va Tech at home to end of the year. Mm-hmm. That is. Uh, that's just a rough schedule. I, I don't think he's being yeah. given a fair chance with that schedule, and I don't think he's going to find a way to get it done. Um, and then from there, uh, fifth. This this was definitely a tough one um, once you get in here, because I think all five of these teams that are right in here, they could be in any order, because uh, you never really know. I mean, the ACC Coastal is just – that is some ride going through the ACC Coastal. Uh, but I have Miami. Uh, uh, from what I've looked at, again – Miami, that's almost the same thing, kind of the same situation as Virginia. It's a lot of talent that is just underachieved, uh, except for Brad Kaya. Uh, that that kid's going to be really good. That's the reason I think they end up winning seven games. Uh, the running game, uh, again, they lost Duke Johnson, right. who was a special talent. I thought that kid All-time was All-time leading really rusher at the U. And so. he, w- he only played, what, three years? Three years. So... Uh, that's saying a lot at the U. Uh, that, so now you got Urabai, who's really talented, uh, and you got a couple other guys that can rotate in there. Wide receivers. Uh, I mean, we thought Stacy Coley was going to be really good last year after what he produced his uh, freshman year. Didn't really work out. Um, but if he can find a way to get it going, they have guys like Rashawn Scott and Herb Waters who are there. Offensive line, they return only one. Uh, one starter from a year ago. They actually only returned three stars in the entire offense, and one of them isn't even projected to start. So that generally is not a good sign. Defense, they have, a, again, a lot of talent, but a lot of guys that have underachieved. Guys like Deion Bush, who was supposed to be a great safety, sort of underachieved. Uh, linebacker, they have a couple guys like Tyreek McCord, who could be really good. Uh, but my favorite player on their defense is a guy at defensive end. His name is Al Quaidon Muhammad. I think this guy... We saw him last year. He's really good, and if he can prove himself again this year, he can be talented. But I, I think they have to have these guys that came in as big recruits, you know, show that show what they have in their skill set. I mean, they got you know a couple guys like the guy that I I remember hearing about a couple of years ago, one of the best corners in the ACC coming into his freshman year, Tracy Howard. They said this kid was going to be special. Now what's he doing? Senior year, he's backing up uh, a guy named Corn Elder, who used to play running back at Nebraska. So I mean. You know, there, there's talent there. I think Al Golden's a, a, a good coach, but I think he should be on the hot seat. I don't know if people have him on the hot seat, mm-hmm. but he should be. I mean, they at, at Miami, last year they won 6-7. and seven. They, they need to be winning eight games a year, at yeah. least. Uh, I don't think they finished fifth. Um, I, there, there, there's too much there to, to believe that. Um you, know, you talk about Al Golden, and the dude's been put in a tough spot. I mean, he still has the NCAA sitting over his head. Oh, I mean, we know that. The, the, oh, we know that feeling. Because I believe was it his first or second year they could have played an ACC championship game. Granted, it was an eight-four record, but you know when the NCAA is still yeah. on campus, he did the smart thing. Um, so I think you know that talent-wise. If you look at just talent, oh, and talent don't win football the games all the time. The best, best in the country. I mean, they'd be winning if if you just gave them off talent, they'd be winning eleven games yes. a year. It's it's a ten win football team. It the, the fans expect ten wins, um, which I respect that. I do. You know, the, the, there's pressure at Miami that Al Golden's had to deal with that, quite frankly, just ain't fair. 
Um, I, I I think what he's done. I mean, you know, two years ago this team was a seven and zero start. Now they faded down the stretch. True. But he's proven that he can win. Um, I mean, he 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 was he was what started that Temple program in yes. the right direction. So, um, so I think they finished better than fifth. But I mean, I have them going seven and five and finishing. Yeah. There. So I mean, it's not like um, I have them being horrible. Um, you know. Do I think Al goes in the hot seat? I don't think so. I think he has one year, and then, you know, maybe goes into a trying year. But I believe, you know, that that team could could solidly win eight football games, You're, Yeah. make a decent bowl game, and then maybe next year with another experience for Kaya, maybe that outside team that if they put it all together, yeah, does something special at the U. I mean, my thing is with him, the reason I think he, he, he should be on the hot seat, he's 28 and 22 at at, at I mean, six games above five hundred. Yes, is is not so. They should be six games above five hundred every year. Right, <laughs> easy. I mean, um, so you know, I I think, like you said, there's talent, but I think again with them finishing fifth, it's that's another team that's hit or miss. They could win ten games. Yes. They could very, win seven games. Much so. They're it's, probably it's, the biggest hit or miss in the division. Yeah, they. I mean, they seriously could, could, could win ten games or or maybe even miss a bowl game. That's how nuts it is. Uh, and then. Uh, at four, I have Pittsburgh. I think they're going to be a good team. Now, they did take a huge hit. We don't know any other news. I have not seen anything else on this. Uh, if you guys did, please tweet at me and tell me uh, if you guys have heard anything on this. Tyler Boyd was uh, found for DUI. I know uh, it was when I was on vacation, uh, so I didn't really get to read into it a whole bunch. Um, but if they lose him, boy, that's that's – that's got to be their most talented player, I think, that's gone. Um, but besides him, of course, James Conner, the running back, he's he's going to be a good kid. I think he's a special talent. I think he's the best running back to actually in the ACC. Uh, I mean, the dude, he, he runs a pit style of, 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 of a running back. He, he's that physical runner uh, that they like. Uh, there's all, you know, talent around there. Again, quarterback's another area that they got to be consistent. I think Voitech's going to be consistent. Uh, I think he's finally going to step up. Defense... There's a lot of question marks. That secondary has underachieved, uh, but you know, pretty much every secondary in the ACC is underachieved uh, by many people's standards. I um, mean, you look around there. There's no real huge stars. Um, they do return seven starters, so I think that's a little bit of a plus. But there's no one in there that you're saying this guy really is a superstar. Um, so you know, hopefully they're able to uh, put it all together. And I think if they could put it all together. Once again, another team that can make that move up there. But if they lose Boyd, that could be a team that wins four games because that's, right. that's a great talent. He does just about everything for that team. Um, so, I mean, I know we've, we've seen them. You know, they ran all over us last year yes. and somehow beat them. So, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you think uh, about the Panthers? The, the, the thing I think about first is Pat Narduzzi getting a hold of that program. That's very true. Um, that's very true. He is blue-collar as it gets. Um, he... he He's probably not from Pennsylvania, but he'll be looking as a pit guy because they're he's going to bring he's going to fix the defense. Yeah, and they're going to be some big physical sons of a guns that no one's going to want to play. Oh, and definitely, he wants to run the ball, and that fits right to what he has sitting in his hands it, at James yes. Conner. Um, that, oh, they, they, that guy talent. should be fed the rock forty times a game because he will wear down. Defense. Well, I mean, you still have Boyd. You have to get the ball in his hands. But I think they can be creative with how you get the ball in his hands. Um, I don't think they finished fourth. I think they're 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 fifth. I think they're they're I respect that. they're a program though that I think is could be. I mean, Pat Narduzzi's coming under a good guy from the Big Ten and uh, Antonio. Oh yes. Um, so I expect that program to be back to what Pitt Pitt fans expect. Um, winning nine, ten games, competing for championships. So, but this year, no. Um, yeah, no, not they're, this year. He needs they're, they're, they're building, and Narduzzi, uh, I, I love the hire and I hate the hire because I was glad he got a head coaching job, just headed to be in our, in our in our conference, more importantly in our division. True. But, You're right. you know, I look forward to seeing them progress. Oh, yeah. In the ACC, and uh, let's hope the Tars will keep on beating them. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to hope that. I, I think, I like what you said. I think it, he's going to he's gonna make that defense really physical, and yeah. that's going to be fun to watch them play, except against us. Uh, but, again, another another job that I think when he comes in there, and, and this is winning seven games, he needs time to get up there, because the expectations are high, which I think at Pitt, 
is a li- the expectations that they have are a little bit out there because they've never been like a superstar program. They're not the team that's always won eleven games. They're mm-hmm. not, you know. But I th- I can see why they would have those high expectations. Being in the ACC though, I mean the coastal, you know, it's up and down. So I mean, you know, you never know what they could do. They could surprise some people. But I think the key thing for them, they got to know if they got Boyd or not. If they yeah. have Boyd, then it, then their offense is a different. You know, it it, it works out differently. They- They'll, that'll give him the big deep threat off the play action pass. Which, oh yes, yeah, you know. and and dude, he he does it. He, he literally does everything. He kicks and punt returns. Yeah. Him. So if they lose him, they're in big trouble. Ah, uh, unless I mean, you could just put Connor back there and he'll just run through everyone. God, what a monster of a man. We respect to James Connor if you're somehow watching this. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, and for, we move on number three. I have the Duke Blue Devils. I hate to say it. But, man, I knew it would eventually happen. David Cutcliffe would finally find himself some success because that, I have to admit, David Cutcliffe is one of the, I think he's one of the better coaches in college football. He has um, done a hell of a job. Yes. With what he's had to deal with. Exactly. In Durham. I mean, we've seen, I know, personally, as a guy that is a, an Eli Manning fan, I know what he's done with both of those brothers, and he's made them into great quarterbacks. Uh, Eli's better than Peyton. Just want to sneak that in there, too. Uh, but when you look at them, they do lose their quarterback, Anthony Boone, who was talented. But at the same time, again, he was not built to pass the ball whole. I always thought, though, even with the two great receivers, he was the heart and soul of what they did. Because He's an emotional leader. He, he really, you know, yeah, he could play like crap, but when they needed Anthony Boone... He showed up. He, he, he showed up he against showed us. us. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. But, I mean, when you look at their quarterback position, they're not really dead. Thomas Sirk's a decent quarterback. Same thing with Parker Boehm. Uh, so they got they got talent there. Uh, they just got to get one of them to fill in that role. The running back position, they are loaded. I mean, they've got – you pick who you want. You got uh, Shaquille Powell, Sean Wilson. You still got Jalea Duncan there. So you've got guys that can do everything. Uh, you got speed, uh, physicality, and all that. In their uh, wide receiver, I don't even think uh, their best their best receiver will be their wide receiver. Their best receiver is going to be Braxton Deaver, their tight end. That kid was really talented. He tore his ACL last year uh, before the season, so um, he didn't really get to play. We didn't really get to see him. But if their wide receivers can step up, because the only one that returns is McCaffrey, uh, if they get some other guys to step up, that offense could be really tough. And that defense, um, they have one of the best safeties in the country in Jeremy Cash. Uh, that, I mean, he he had, he was up there. Devon Edwards had 133 tackles as a safety last year. Uh, that's just nuts. Good and um, bad. Good. It, that's true. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, definitely uh, uh, you know. And then they returned Kelby Brown, who I, is is a oh, just a monster linebacker. Another guy that they lost early in the year. You got his brother Kyler, who's still there. Um, so I mean, you've got talent all over that team. Um, and again, it sets up for them to probably have some success. I mean, you look at their schedule, there's definitely some tough games. But again, I mean, we've been trying to bet against them for years here. Everyone, not just Cario fans, just everyone in college football saying, you know, last year they said, well, they had one good year, they're going to fight off. They didn't. And I think they're around to stay. I think they're going to have another good year. Uh, I think they're going to be third in the conference. Uh, we win the tiebreaker against them because it is uh, – we we it is in our place, so I think we can beat them there. But um, I do think Duke's going to be good. Uh, so what do you think about the uh, the, I think, the team? I think Duke Duke Miami uh, they switch places. It's natural for Duke to regress, and I think they're going to regress record wise. But I still think they're going to be a team that nobody, including us. Deep down, wants no part of. Yeah, I. Yeah. Um, I mean, and main I, I'm reason, ready for him, but main still. reason, David Cutcliffe is such a good leader of men that, you know, he he, you think of Duke football, you're yeah. gonna think of David Cutcliffe. Um, he he's true, done a lot. True. They're they're. Duke's never gonna be so serious about football, but they're putting the effort forward. That's because of him. They're winning. Um. They oh, have yeah. played an ACC championship game. Um, <sighs> you call that playing, but whatever. So, I think they regressed with the loss of Boone. You know, yeah. they, they they did lose. Lose to Crowder. Yeah, who I believe is their player. greatest receiver statistically to ever come through Durham. Um, Get everything, punt and kick returns. So, so, yeah, that's a huge loss. That's, you know, replacing that. No. I, 
I, I think Duke will be good. The Victory Bell will stay Carolina Blue. But it's in our place. We're not losing. So, there. No. you know, yeah. Duke, you can enjoy the cellar because, you know, Carolina's I mean, they're, coming. They're not, they're not going to the cellar. Well, so. no, but they're going to be, the they're going to be teams. fifth. You got them fifth? Okay, so you got, okay. Fifth, possibly, you know. I would, I mean, I have them third, but again, that's another team. I mean, you look, again, they're at a conference schedule. They, they always, I, I think they play Northwestern every year. Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea why they want to play them every year. But they always play them. They're, they're, they're upside um, to me is their best is third, their worst is fifth or sixth. Yeah, I, I mean. Uh, I don't see them Yeah, they getting back to Charlotte. No, no, this year. not um, not this year. No, not with uh, no, you know Georgia Tech. They need a new with the new quarterback and 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 Crowder gone as we yeah. said. That that's gonna be that'd be a miracle if they made it there. But hey, no one thought they were gonna make it there a couple of years ago. Right. I don't want them to make it there. Lord, oh yeah. no, but uh, you know, I I still think they're gonna be a good team. And then we move on to second. It's the boys. It's it's the Tar Heels. We're, we're gonna. I I think we're gonna finish second this year. Um. Just from looking at the schedule, we, we get a good, a favorable at a conference schedule this year. Uh, I know South Carolina is going to be tough. We should be three and one. We, I believe. I think we're going to beat South Carolina because I, I think South Carolina comes in with a quarterback battle going on, and I, it's not just one quarterback. They got or two quarterbacks even. They got a, they got three or four still going for that spot. They got a uh, Lorenzo Nunez doesn't come in until the fall too, so that he's apparently in the mix. And that's just not a good situation. We know that as Tar Heel fans, we saw it last year. Uh, but this year, we actually are going to pick a quarterback. I'm hoping, please, Larry, please. Uh, we're going to go with Keese, I'm hoping. Marquise Williams. Uh, very talented quarterback. Heisman sleeper, baby. I, he is a Heisman sleeper. Um, if he can cut down on some of the mistakes. There, you there look are at the numbers he did. did in the first four games, he's yes. still time. I mean, um, he's talented. Um, and I think... Say what you want, even though we lost the game, I think his start against Notre Dame really showed that he is a very talented player, mm-hmm. and he's not afraid of any stage that he's going to go on. Um, running game, we know as Tar Heel fans, and we're going to do a whole breakdown on this, so if any Tar Heel fans are watching this, we're going to literally sit there and break down every single position of this. Right. Um, It'd be good if we could run the football week yeah. one and not, you know, let's pick one rivalry. Yeah, let's game, not start against Duke there, Mr. TJ Logan. Yeah. I mean, we love you, and uh, we want you to be successful. But my thing is, uh, they, they got Elijah Hood, who I think is our best running back. He should be our best running back. But we have four guys that are formidable running backs, at we, least. We, and then we saw Tyson Williams. Yes. If they don't redshirt him, that kid's going to be the best one out of them. We, have, we have everything a running game needs. We have the speed with the Romar. True. We got the, you know, the Logan has speed. The, but, he's but, a blend. He's but, a mix. He's but got he's both. more physical. And then you got Hood. Physical. He's just a bulldozer. You want to get in front of him, he'll truck you. And then you got Chris Francis, who has long hair, and he's just there. We yeah. do love you, Chris. We do. Uh, um, his brother loves you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and then we move on to wide receiver. Uh, of course, we got guys like Quinshaw Davis. Uh, we got Ryan Switzer, who we all love. He's an exciting player. Um, you know, and... and just watching him, I mean, you look, he led the team in, in most of the statistical categories. Um, and with that being said, I hate to say it, but I don't think he's our most talented receiver. I don't think he's our best receiver. He's got the he's got the most athleticism, but I think Davis is a little bit better than him. Hopefully he can rebound from the injury. You got Matt Collins that's there, Bug Howard, uh, you know, guys like Austin Prohl, Damian Washington. I mean, there are plenty of talent there. The offensive line has had a year to gel. Um, and I know... You know, we return at least four starters are going to start. They're probably not going to start John Ferranto, uh, who we do. I, I think he's a good offensive tackle, but a guy like Bentley Spain, he can't keep that guy as a backup. That kid is, is, is extremely talented. Uh, at, you know, we've, we've got a lot of talent there, but again, another year where there's not a whole lot of depth. So if someone goes down, we get a guy or two that goes down, we, we may be in a little bit of trouble. Defensively, there's only one way to go, and that's up. Talk about a disaster. I mean, we let up 70 points to East Carolina. Uh, we, I don't even think we would let up that much in basketball to them in two games. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Clemson, we let up 50. Um, and same thing with Notre Dame. And I don't, I'm not saying Clemson and Notre Dame don't have good offenses, but both of those are games we should have won with the points that we ended up scoring in those games. Uh, but defensively, again, 
4-3 defense. We've got Gene Shizik in there. That was the storyline here, in, in even in North Carolina. And I'm, I guess out in Auburn, they probably had a little two-second you know, two story on that. They probably the rolled the trees or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably something like that. That is, that is terrible right there. You are a bad man. Uh, but <laughs> when we look at the line, talent's there. Nazir Jones... I think is our most talented defensive lineman for this year. Now, he's nowhere near what we've had as defensive There's lineman. There's no stud, and I think that works in our hands. Not yet. I think Drennan is, is coming. Jawan Drennan's coming. He's, to start the season, you're going to have to block all four. True. But someone will develop into that guy. That's, that's the hope. Out there. Um, you know, you got guys, I mean, like Drennan, they, uh, Jesse Rogers, uh, who could be very good. Uh, Justin Thomas is going to be on the inside. I think he'll stay there. Uh, Junior Non Conde is going to be good as well. Um, and, you know, there's a couple other guys. I like Tyler Powell. I like the way he plays. Um, and the all, there's, there, he, he does take some – he gets fired up a little too much. He took a couple of penalties last year. I think a couple of personal foul penalties. I was like, ah, come on, man. But – you know, I like seeing that. I like seeing yeah. that, that fire because there's some guys that just don't have it. And then we get to the linebackers. We got, of course, our fair player on Schottmer. defense, Jeffrey Schottmer. Gotta love Jeff Schottmer. Um, but there's a lot of talent here. His backup may actually be the second best talented player, uh, Andre Smith. This is a true freshman. We watched him at the scrimmage they played here yeah. in Charlotte. This kid is going to be really, really good uh, if it can translate. Shakir Rashad. Uh, he's also in there. He's been there for a while, so he's got a lot of experience. Joe Jackson's going to be really talented as well. Uh, Case and Collins, Terrell Tom. we got a whole bunch of them in there uh, that are going to be really good. And then when we get into the secondary, this is an area where there is talent. Um, we just didn't show it last year. Yes. we got to improve again. Like he said, there's only one direction, and that's that's up, way up. Uh, you we know, got, Brian Walker. we got Studs and Walker and Lawrence. Walker's going to be good. Lawrence is not projected to even start. They have well, Malik Simmons starting, and I think Malik Simmons is talented, but I think there's a guy that's better than both of them, in my opinion. I think it's MJ Stewart. I think he is going to be really good. Yeah. Now, he got burned last year in the game against San Diego State. I remember that play. He got lit up. I mean, the dude hit him by about 20 yards. But, you know, he was a true freshman then. He's had an offseason. He's going to be talented. There's a lot there. And then in the safety position, you got guys like Sam Smiley, uh, who's a good player. Um, J.K. Braid is coming out as a true freshman. Donnie Miles has moved to safety from linebacker. And the most talented guy, the guy that I personally like, and he may end up being my favorite secondary player, is Dominic Grant. I just don't know what happened to him at the end of last year. Like, yeah. did, did he get hurt or something? Because he didn't play. And I think he's really talented. He's shown that before. Um, and if we get all that stuff to work... Um, the kicking game, oh, uh, we might as well. I, in, I mean, I'm hoping, please, Is there please, bar Freeman Jones, the way? please, Freeman Jones, be, some, be, be good. Punting game, Corbin Daly takes over for, for Tommy Hibbert, who was a great punter. We love you. Uh, Corbin, go out there and do your best. But we need to find a kicker. I, Nick Weiler, if only you could turn what you do on kickoffs to the field goals, oh, you could kick one from 70. If you, please. Please just give us a kicking game, because if we get a kicking game, we've discussed this. We're going to go even more in-depth than this on the Tar Heels. We can win nine games. I think we do win nine games. It's manageable. But, once again, being a Tar Heel fan, we know you're either hit or you're miss. And we have not really we've hit whiffed. since Butch. And, yeah. and we need, this is a year for Larry. I'm not saying he's on the hot seat. Yeah. If he goes four and eight, yeah. He's on the hot seat. But if not, I mean, if he finds a way to win nine games, watch out. Yeah. Watch out. We're going to be talented. Um, I mean, I, do you have anything to add to that? I know I I've mean, been going on here for a few minutes, but this is... This is this you is know, when, 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 when Larry came to Chapel Hill, he preached three words, which are smart, fast, and physical, which are going to find our program. By them. Um, if those three words not come to, come to fruition... Carolina will not be successful. True. Smart is not turning the football over and at wrong times. True. Um, fast. I mean, I saw a stat on Twitter where we were the we ran the most plays per minute in college football. I From Washington, I don't think so. But yeah. Apparently. And then and then physical. I think that's never been there defensively. Gene Chiz is going to bring an SEC big boy kind of style mentality to the defense. Um. Yeah. Oh, and I want to mention Vic Koning. Uh, 
I know you're a Carolina, you were a Carolina coach, but we're glad you're out of town. Okay, <laughs> that is one man that I just don't respect. Hated the four, hated the defensive style he ran. And uh, thank, thank, thank you, Gene. Please, so just fix this. You know. Um. Oh yeah. I, I, I've got high hopes. Um. I'm giving. I'm going all in on them. Of the course. I know how to do of it. Of course. And uh, and uh, I mean, know. another thing we got to mention, uh, Ryan Switzer. We really love him, but he's got to be a lot better on punt returns than yeah. he was last year. He, Part of that, though, I think, goes on the coaching staff on trying to draw up special ways, such as blocking, to, to get him to get him freed. My thing but is, but a lot of it is on him with the, you know, ballerina around in the that that I don't so, get. You know, I turn up field. I mean, we don't know. We're not punt returners, Ryan. If you're watching this, uh, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna see it meet the heels. So don't hate us. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, oh, I mean we're you know it's just I mean definitely there was some blocking. I know when I watched us play Liberty uh, first game of the year. I know it's first game of the year, but there was some awful blocking for him. I mean it was it was disastrous. He had nowhere to go. Um, but my thing is, I need I, they need to run him on kickoffs. I know they're saying well we don't want to tire him out for offense, but our projected kick returner is Logan, who's our starting running back. So if you're going with that, that makes no sense. Yeah. Run him back there. Put him back there. Put Prol back there if you have to. You got to get someone that can return the football. Yep, I mean consistently you know, on kick returns. Larry's a big believer in special teams, and yes, last year they that was a disaster. They, you know, special teams is quietly the biggest part of the game because the field position, especially the way we yeah, want to play, exactly. Yeah, the shorter the field we have, the better. That's very true. Um, that's very true because we want to score a lot of points. Yes, so. And the short amount of we have to go, you know, and it it helps. And if you get returns or touchdowns like we did two years ago, five, it 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 helps. Um, but you know, yeah. I think this program, since Matt Brown left town, has been the program that everyone said if they get the right guy, they'll explode. They, hopefully, this is it now. Hopefully, he's, we're, we're I, done with the excuses. Yeah, he's got, We've gone he's all right in. Guy. We've got we got championship caliber defensive coordinator. Yep, he's we, we, we put the money in. Yeah, let's go be successful. We need to. This, um, is, this has got to be one and of the and years. and move forward. And then we go from one team that likes to run offense to another team that likes to. They love to just have run a great offense. All they do is run. Yeah, you want to watch a game where you just run? Want to watch? You know the high school football. Uh, Formation run to perfection. You watch Georgia Tech. This team is going to be really good. They've got a great quarterback. Their most talented quarterback, I think, maybe, maybe, it, it, since I've started watching college football. I know, I know, I watched uh, Nesbitt play, tore us up. So, uh, but Justin Thomas, the kid, I, I believe, last year before the season started, they had written in one of the magazines that I read. He had a four. 40 time and as a quarterback that is just freakish but in that offense it makes sense um, but the problem is they have zero running backs back from last year as starters zero and I'm I mean so they have to bring in a whole new group of guys um, you know I know they got a good transfer in the, at the B back which is what their fullback position is called uh, in Patrick Scove uh, we all remember his brother Shane from Sanford uh, he's going to be good, but again, that's another guy that's going to come in as a transfer. He's going to have a short time to learn the offense, and he has probably never seen anything like this, at least in college football, and especially the way they run it. Uh, they don't, as we said, no real running backs that are back from last year. They're going to have to get guys like Broderick Snotty and uh, Dennis Andrews to step up. A couple other guys back there could be J.J. Green, Clinton uh, Lynch. And then at wide receiver, there's talent, but again, uh, not really since Calvin Johnson have they had a great receiver, but you don't really need a great receiver. Basically, if you to play receiver at Georgia Tech, you just got to know how to run down the field and catch, catch a deep ball. That's all you got to do. If you have jump people, you're fine. Uh, defensively, um, they are very talented. Their defense is really underrated. People don't really look at them as a great defensive team. Their secondary is stacked. Guys like DJ White, Chris Melton, Joe Maul Golden, who have been there for a long time, and they're still there doing their thing. Uh, you got uh, up front a guy in... Uh, Adam Gotsis, who's a really good defensive tackle. And then they move a, a former linebacker that was really good uh, in Jabari Hunt days to defensive tackle. So he gained a lot of pounds over the offseason. They're putting him inside. That tells you they must have a bunch of talent if they're moving him inside. Um, and from looking at their roster, I mean, they're talented. Their kicking game's going to be good again. Um, 
I mean, there's not really a big-time flaw that you can see, but we've expected great things out of them before, and they give us an 8-5, and five, a 7-6 and six season. I mean, that's the thing about, you know, it's another case of playing in the ACC Coastal. I mean, we've seen it on uh, the college football final. Let's play the ACC Wheel of Destiny. It really is in the Coastal. Anyone can win it, but... From what I've seen, Georgia Tech is is gonna have a. Uh, I think they're gonna have a good year. Now they uh, they th- they do have a couple of tough games on their schedule. Games like at Notre Dame, they play at Duke. Uh, they have to play us, but they play them in uh, us in Atlanta. So that's that's a good thing for them. They play at Clemson. That's gonna be tough. And they get Florida State. So they actually end up having the worst crossover draw, getting both Florida State and Clemson. So, I mean, they're gonna have a tough. It's gonna be tough, but I have them going ten and two. Yeah, and seven and one in conference. So the, the the big thing they have is they got a quarterback. They do. Um, that Lee was player. was good. Good player. Yeah. But I thought Paul Johnson went away from what he wants to do because they kind of became. Now I'm not gonna say a throw first team, but they threw the ball more than what you expect so out of this. Basically, a throw first team for a Georgia Tech type. Yes. Yeah. But the thing um, was, Lee was. Lee didn't fit that system yeah. that well. He's, he, he, he was he was probably it. too athletic, and he had, he had too big. He an was arm. too good of a quarterback to play that. So he's you want to know what they want is a running back that yeah. can hand the ball off. That's and, and throw a little bit. That's that's basically what they want. Um, but the team should be good. They yes, you know, their defense is always you know it's normally good. Lot, but I think a lot of that is you know they're on the sideline for because seven minutes. Georgia Tech forever. Will, will, will eat the clock. Yep. Um, and they'll still find a way to score 68 against us. So or not? Yeah. Terrible. It, it'd be it'd be a disappointment. I think if they did not get back to Charlotte. Yes. Um, I think this team they've got a tough schedule. You know, if if, if there was one team that would come out of our division to to make a run at the playoff, it's them. And yes. I would say you yeah, there, there's reason, no team yes. in the country that one of would you know Nick Saban could be the smartest guy in the world. You don't want to prepare for that. He don't want to. He don't want to prepare for that. So yeah, if they're not in Charlotte, I I don't care. I, I hope, hope we're there. Yeah. I hope we're there. Yeah, that's got. But I, I, I hope that's us. I would be shocked because yes, they're they're too good. Yeah, I um, mean they they yeah. they dismantled what was right. Mississippi State in the bowl game. Um. And they gotta build off of that success, and yes. you know you can have really limited experience, but in that offense, you know, they they've got the reps. Oh yeah, I mean, I they, believe, I believe they'll be okay. They showed it last year. I mean, look, the the ACC championship game, they gave the quote unquote best quarterback in ACC history, as some people are saying. I don't think that's true. Uh they they gave him a run, and this year, if they play Clemson. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Now, of course, the the game that's in that that is in Clemson, I have them winning. But man, I it's it's gonna be this ACC championship game will be very good this yeah. year. It's not gonna be that dud that we saw with Florida State and Duke. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I I think Georgia Tech's gonna be said. I have them winning uh, the division as as I said. Them and Clemson will meet in in Charlotte. Um, you know, but. I think it's going to be a good year in the ACC, and I think we're a conference that's that's definitely on the rise. Uh, you know, if if, if you know if, if we can prove that they can be good, we could have everyone above four wins. That would be sensational. Um, and so we'll move on. Uh, I'm going to read through a couple of my all ACC picks here. Um, you know, we'll go with the main positions, offensive line. Uh, we we will we'll, I'll mention a couple of the guys. No one. Uh, not a whole lot, but a quarterback. My two quarterbacks that I have, I have Watson first team, definitely, and I have Marquise Williams second team from the Heels because yeah, the, I think he's the, that talented. The second one could be up in the air depending on what Justin Thomas does. Kaya, uh, Brissett, if yeah. he has a great year. I mean, there's so many guys uh, you know, that could get in there. Yeah. You know? um, Brewer, never know. There, there's, you know, the ACC has a, is a big old question mark, and that even goes to trying to pick – Preseason, all, all conference. Yeah, teams. this was the hardest one. That Besides I Deshaun seen. Watson, if he plays twelve games, um, he'll be a, he, he the, 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 the kids will go nuts. And Death yeah. Valley, you you better enjoy while you have them. Oh yeah, 
So. Definitely. Uh, running backs. Uh, my fir- my first team. Uh, I did the two running backs. I have Connor and Cook. Uh, yes. I think Connor's the best out of all of them. Uh, and my second team, I have Yerby from Miami, who I think is going to play well this year. And I have Shaq Powell from Duke. The only thing that I would say about Shaq Powell from Duke, uh, the only reason he may not make it is because they're going to they have too much talent in that backfield that he won't get the ball enough, uh, which would be terrible because I think the kid's actually going to be really good. Uh, wide receiver. Again, I have Boyd. That's one that's fluid right now. We don't know if he's going to be able to play. Uh, Travis Rudolph from Florida State. He was such a big-time recruit last year that he should be uh, up there. Um, Ryan Switzer uh, from from Carolina. I think he's going to step up and, and, and have a big year. If he can produce anywhere close to those numbers from last year and improve on them uh, just a little bit, maybe just improve the touchdowns. He'll be up there. And I have uh, I have Kanan Severin from Virginia because I really think that kid's going to be really good. Uh, just looking at, but there's plenty of guys. Uh, Stacy Coley, if he can get back to the way he played his freshman year, he can yeah. be right there. Uh, you never know with Georgia Tech's wide receivers. You can get a guy that has you know six catches for a thousand yards. So it's not even possible, but it, you know, then they're just nuts. Um, you know, there's 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 other talent, but again, I, I think that's a, that's a position. Uh, James Quick from Louisville. That's one, another one that I want to mention. If he finds a way to play the way he's supposed to play, that'd be all right. Uh, tight end. This one was hard because there are, there are some really good tight ends actually in this in, in this uh, conference. I know uh, Bucky Hodges from Virginia Tech. That's who I have as mine. He's a former quarterback that moved there. The dude is six six. I mean, he's built. He's a monster. Played great there last year. And uh, you know the guy we've seen him, Braxton Deaver from Duke. He yeah. That kid's gonna be really good. Uh, offensive line. Just mention a few guys here. Uh, center. Uh, we have the center Matt Skura from Duke. Uh, Landon Turner from North Carolina, I think it'll be a first team if he stays healthy. He's got to stay healthy. A uh, couple other guys like Wyatt Teller from Virginia Tech, I think it'll be a first teamer. Same with Brian Chamberlain and Roderick Johnson from Florida State. Uh, but there's other talented young guys that can make it. A guy like Tyrone Crowdy from Clemson could be up there. Uh, he was a highly talented recruit, so we could see if maybe he gets up there uh, as well. Uh, defensive side of the ball. Uh, there are actually three players from Virginia Tech that are on the first team <laughs> offensive line. You got Eakin and you got Nicholas, you got Maddie. They are just all out there. They're all great, um, you know. And that's that's putting guys like Shaq Lawson and uh, Al Quaday Muhammad from Miami behind them. Both of those guys had very talented years. And as I said, I think DeJuan Drennan could get his name up in there uh, if he would stop taking so many Instagram pictures. But uh, <laughs> you know. I'm just kidding there, you know. Uh, but you're gonna—he's he, gonna be a really good player. Uh, and then, you know, second team, I actually have Corey Marshall from Virginia Tech too. So all four of their starting offensive linemen will make the the ACC uh, teams. I think Gotsis from uh, Georgia Tech will make the first team, and I actually have Nazir Jones from North Carolina making it. I think he's that talented. He showed it a lot last year. Linebacker. Terrence Smith, Stephen Daniels from Boston College, you'll probably have like 150 tackles uh, somehow. And then Keith Kelsey from Louisville is a, is a great talent. Uh, Kelby Brown also, he'll make the second team. Brandon Chubb from Wake Forest, they're on there, so don't worry about that for Wake Forest fans. And Jeff Schottmer from North Carolina, if he can yeah. play the way he wants to play. But, um, you know, we just, if he learns how to, if, if he can really tackle well, we're, we're going to be in a good spot. Corner. Boy, you may you take your pick here. There are a lot of great corners. Fuller is the is the is yeah. the number one guy, no doubt. He, he, I think it, is he draft eligible this next year? Because he, I mean, dude, he could be the corner that goes number one. He is that talented. That, that <laughs> he's that talented. That kid's nuts. Then Ramsey from Florida State, but again, he's got to stay out of trouble. If he stays out of trouble, just like half that Florida State roster. They're going to be really good, but they they just they always have trouble off the field. It's just a shame to watch. And then second team is Mackenzie Alexander. If he's in any other conference, he's a first team guy. But you got two yeah. of the best in the country right there. And then Jack Taco from NC State. He's going to be really good. Again, another great name to add to the yeah. list there. Taco. Uh, he's going to be. He's he's going to be. He's going to be pretty good. He had uh, how many picks did he have last year? Uh, I think he had three last year. But he's they, he's going to be a real great talent. Uh, safety, as I said, Cash from Duke. I think he's a, he's he's in he could be a first team All American. He's that good. Uh, Blanding from Virginia. I think he's the only reason that their defense is really formidable. Um, 
And then you got Jamal Golden from Georgia Tech, who's been there for so long, and Deion Bush from Miami is another talented guy that can get it done. Kicker, we all know who that's going to be. That's going to be Aguayo. Right. He's, I don't think he, he may not miss this year. Uh, and then I have Amon Le- uh, Lakehamp, I think is how you pronounce his name. I know Clemson fans will probably be on me for that one. Uh, he, I think he's second team. Punter, Will Monday from Duke. Uh, he's very talented. And Case and Beatty from Florida State. Those two could be interchangeable. Kicker Turner, Devon Edwards from Duke. TJ Thorpe from Virginia. I think, you know, we saw he can run some back. He's talented. And if Virginia can get some blocking, that might be about the only offense they're going to find. So they're going to need him to step up. Punt returner, got to take my boy Switzer. I think he's going to step back up. And boy, again, another run that we'll just we'll have to wait and see if he plays. Um, so we got the ACC done. Uh, I thought it was pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed uh, it. definitely something we could do. Next week will be the American. Uh, it's just going to depend. I'll put on uh, on my personal Twitter account and uh, on the show's Twitter account as well whether or not I'll have a guest with me or not. If I'll be doing it by myself. Uh, but either way, uh, I will be doing a show next week. It'll be on the American, and uh, I'm going to. Wait a little while. I'm also going to do a free agency recap for the NBA. Uh, I'm going to try to wait till LaMarcus Aldridge signs, so that might be sometime in October. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see because that man's just taking forever. Uh, so, thank you guys for watching, and we hope you enjoyed. Uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, Future uh, Tar Heel. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Anthony underscore Pagnata96. And if you want to follow this guy, follow him at Future UNC Grad on Twitter. And he just got an Instagram, what is it, Josh Marlowe 5? Yes. Yes. Josh Marlowe 5 on Instagram as well. And also follow the show's uh, Twitter page if you want to, at the Pagnata Take. Thanks, guys.